this is a sample report. So we have the Revit file. Um, and this is the wall to roof and the floor to the wall to floor transition. Okay, so this is basically what we expected. And uh, here in the wall to floor, uh, there should be like two options. Uh, Matthew, what's the difference between this and this? So that, that one right there is the EPS outside of the building. And then the one slide four is the EPS on the inside of the building. Inside the building. Okay, so you mean the floor. So here the thermal insulation is it's inside. And here the thermal insulation is outside. Yep. Okay, uh, you should have reflected that in the Revit detail as well, because this is Revit and the, this is Revit and this is Therm, is it? Yeah. Well, if you don't mind, uh, it's good uh, having both uh, Re the Revit and the, the Therm file. They have to be the same because here, this Revit file doesn't show the, the thermal insulation. Okay, so it's better. I can see that in the Therm file, but I don't see that in the Revit file. Okay. Uh, so if we analyze this, uh, this is something that you already know that this solution has to be better because here we don't have, we don't break the continuous thermal insulation and that should, should work much better than this one. But then we have to quantify that. If we see the color legend that goes from, uh, okay, but this color legend is the temperatures. I would have expected the uh, the heat flux. Okay, I know it's confusing, but you have shown the the temperatures here because this is in Fahrenheit, and here you have shown the temperatures. So that's why the scale is the same. We go from 32 to 69, and in this case we go from 32 to 69 as well. Uh, so although we see a difference in the drawing itself, okay. Uh, but uh, we don't see the heat flux and the relevant information. Well, temperature is relevant as well. But uh, so we can add two uh, analysis. We can add both analysis. I mean, the temperature and the heat flux. But uh, in this exercise, I think the heat flux, it was more, more relevant than the temperature. So I'll show you how to do it. Anyway, uh, you can fix that. So try to fix the, the Revit file showing the thermal insulation here and this one showing the thermal insulation uh, outside or underneath the, the floor slab and for the walls uh, you are showing here the color legend as well and uh, yeah but yeah and here uh, you have to show both uh, both details and um, by the way how many inches do you have here in the in this roof so that's at a uh, three foot six <laughs> three foot <laughs> wow <laughs> uh i think it's i think it's too much but i mean the more the better but uh uh well I, it seems too much to me one foot or 1.5 feet should be should be enough i mean three it's fine, but I would like to see the, the R value of this roof with three feet of thermal insulation. Okay, I, I think it's too much. But uh, you will have issues with the construction company who say, what, three feet of thermal insulation? We have never done this. Uh, I had this trouble in Spain when I wanted to place thermal insulation at the beginning when I was younger, uh, because the construction companies, they were not used to placing any thermal insulation in walls. And when I told them, okay, I want uh, like uh, three centimeters, three centimeters is uh, uh, inch and a half. And they were, what? Three centimeters of thermal insulation, why? But that was 25 years ago. Uh, now things have changed. But three feet, <laughs> uh, well, if you find a construction company who uh, who is fine with placing uh, three feet on the roof, that's uh, that's perfect but well let's see anyway um i missed the uh, another uh, drawing here with the heat flux I'll, I'll show you how to do it now and but yeah but this is it what we have to do 
you can try, if you have time, you can try two options for the roof as well. I don't know what two options, uh, because does it matter since we are wrapping up this here? Okay, that would be interesting if we had the thermal insulation uh, inside the roof as well. Uh, we wouldn't need to wrap this. And this is something that it's uh, difficult to... So it's easy doing this in Revit or Therm. It's easy, we wrap this parapet and that's fine. But uh, from the construction point of view, doing this is difficult. Okay, so probably it's easier uh, having thermal insulation inside the, the roof. Okay, at least we have to try different options, but uh, that's good. So you can improve it by uh, the midterm submission, but that's fine. And then uh, Jacob's analysis is this one. Okay, so he, uh, he has submitted this. That's interesting, so we can do that as well. And here he has submitted only, no, he has both. He has the floor and the roof. And yeah, so this is what I wanted. Here we have the color legend of the heat flux. Uh, and here we have this uh, other table that there's a mistake here. So I'll show you how to uh, work with this mistake today. Uh, so that's fine, but he has uh, submitted only uh, one option for floors and one option for, for roofs. Uh, so at, he has placed here the, the thermal insulation underneath the, the slab. And this is the, the detail that he has analyzed in, in therm. And now he has to submit another detail with the thermal insulation uh, on the slab and another Revit analysis. And this is the values that we have to, these are the, this is the scale that we have to compare. Okay. So I'm going to uh, work with Revit again. So that's fine for starting. At least uh, the rest of you make sure that you have something like that on Revit by today or, or tomorrow. Because I know that working with Revit, uh, with Therm is uh, difficult. And if you are having some trouble doing it, you have to let me know as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, so now we are going to work with Therm, and probably I was too optimistic because I I had you uh, create a difficult detail uh, just where when when we are starting using Therm. Maybe I, I was too optimistic. So now I'm going to uh, analyze something easier, but uh, I'll show you other Therm features. Okay, because uh, working with the uh, roof to wall transition, it's something difficult at the beginning. Uh, so I will work with a simple uh, single wall today with corners, and then we will analyze how uh, these corners will affect the thermal performance of the, of the building. So let's use therm. Okay. And uh, I told you that I have a, uh, uploaded a template. Okay, so we have this template. Um, but if you are working with Therm, especially when you are uh, analyzing something simple, you can always save uh, different things, save different, uh, uh, different templates or different Therm files. Uh, here I have a corner, I have a roof, and I have a wall timber frame uh, with the R value 28. Okay, so if you are doing something like that, you can save uh, details, simple details, and then you can open these details and then you can keep on improving or uh, working with, uh, with the same detail. But I think hey, it's Fernando, interesting. Yep. I went to open the Therm template and it didn't have concrete in it. Like the materials and stuff weren't the same as the one that you had. That uh, you opened that template, the template. I opened that template like five different times, downloaded it five different times, and it was didn't have concrete or anything. Let me check. So you downloaded this one, this Revit template. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm going to download it. And now I'm going to open. This is in, okay, so this is today's file. Let's open it. So select this and we, I, I do have concrete here. It doesn't show up on mine. I've downloaded it like five times. Okay, I'll upload more templates today. Uh, so let me know and let me know if it works. And if it doesn't work, we can always create a, okay, I'll do that because I think it's interesting. Imagine that we are using a concrete here, okay? Uh, so if we don't have this material, we can always create a new material. And we have to go to libraries and in uh, material library, uh, this is the concrete. So basically, uh, well, this is the fine. Uh, let's open concrete as well, okay? So if you, as you can see in this template, we have to work with three parameters. First, material type. Is it a solid or frame or external radiation enclosure? If we're working with the solid material, we have to type uh, to click on solid. Then this is the conductivity and this is the emissivity. So those are the two uh, parameters that uh, concrete has. So I'm going to write it down because the conductivity is uh, 0.3. Four two, and the emissivity is 0.9. Okay, so by working with these two parameters, uh, we can create a, a new material. You uh, type here new, new material name. So let's say uh, Fernando's concrete. And uh, well, it's a solid material. The thermal conductivity has to be 0.342. And the emissivity, the emissivity of solid materials is always around 0.9. Okay, so probably we don't have to change that. And then we have to close. And we are when we are heating this, there's a Fernando's concrete here. And then you can change the color. Okay, so even if you don't have the material, you can create it easily. And as uh, you have to go to libraries, material library, and the emissivity for solids is always 0 0.9. Well, it's always 0 0.9 except for metals and uh, glass. Okay, but if we're working with uh, solids that are dull, that are not reflective, uh, the emissivity is always 0 0.9. If we're working with brick, uh, concrete, gypsum, Everything that it's not transparent or it doesn't uh, glitter, so it doesn't have this metallic uh, uh, sense, uh, it can be 0.9. And the conductivity is always, well, the conductivity, uh, you can find the conductivity on this element. By the way, uh, the units, uh, you know that here we have the thermal conductivity for this Excel file, and then we have the thermal conductivity uh, in Revit units. It's Revit and Therm. Uh, units because if we open therm here we see that this is btu hour feet fahrenheit so the units are btu feet hour uh, fahrenheit so it's not this column it's this column okay so if you find the, the material here you can make your own uh, material okay so i'm going to upload more uh, materials but if you want to create a new one you only have to uh, type new uh, change the name, solid, and change the conductivity. And then you, you have added a new material to your library. Okay, so this is the template, but I don't want to open, no, I don't want to open this template because I want to open the things that have created today. So this is in, what is it? Uh, courses green 
where do I have the Okay, I know this is a template. Sorry, I'm going to open Therm again because I don't remember uh, where I saved it. Oh my God. Okay, never mind. I'm going to do it again with this. Okay, so I'm going to work with this template, but I don't want uh, this model. I'm going to view the grid and I'm going to uh, work with preferences, snap settings, and let's make it one uh, inch the snap setting. And then I work with the zoom. Uh, let's try 15. Okay, so I'm going to work uh, with something simple. I'm going to work with uh, with a wall and then a corner. And then we will find out um, what, uh, what we can do to assess the, the thermal breach influence on the wall. Okay, because when we have corners, uh, we have to do something special uh, from the structural point of view, and we cannot continue with the with the wall itself. Okay, so first I'm going to do something very simple, and I'm going to uh, create uh, a six one two three four five six inch element, and length is going to be fourteen. One two three four five six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so this is a six by 14 inch uh, rectangle. And I'm going, this is not uh, for not with concrete. I want cellulose. Okay, either one works well, cellulose. Well, it's the same color. And uh, then something very simple, I'm going to use plywood. Uh, outside. Okay, so I'm going to use a uh, fiber. Where is it? Plywood particle, plywood high density. Here you see that we have high density, low density, medium density. Um, what does it mean? Well, uh, the density makes the material more reliable. So it doesn't mean that it's better from the thermal point of view, but the material is more reliable, it's uh, harder, so it's not affected by water or other elements. So you can't uh, scratch it easily. Okay, so I'm using high density by default, but it, it might not be the best option from the thermal point of view, but from other uh, points of view, I'm sure that the high density plywood is the best one. Okay, so I'm using this, this, and now, there you go. Uh, we have thermal insulation, cellulose, then we have plywood, and uh, now we have to work with the boundary conditions. Uh, these side borders or boundaries are always adiabatic, and then I have to work if this is outside and this is inside, I have to select this. If this is a wall, we are looking at a wall, but this is not a section, it's a plan view. Okay, so I'm cutting through the plan and I'm, I'm looking down. So that would be wall exterior and that will be wall interior. Now, uh, this is not enough because I have to go to library, send, set boundary condition. And this is the, this is wall int. Uh, this is the film coefficient, uh, 1.4. I'll show you now where this come, come from. But this has to be uh, interior. And if I select this one, this has to be set boundary uh, exterior. 
Okay. If we uh, go to this uh, boundary condition, here we have a lot of information. We know that this is a wall and its exterior. This is the U factor surface. And we have, this is redundant, but it's necessary. So if we have here X, this has to be exterior. And here we have information about the outdoor temperature. It's zero, but we can change that. And this, uh, well, this is always the same. This 2.93, we are working with a wall exterior. If we look at this Excel file, we are in walls. Uh, we are in the out, outdoor layer. So this air exterior layer, and you see that this R value is a uh, 0.34. Okay, so you see this value here is a uh, 0.34. Uh, so what does uh, does it have anything to do with the therm? It yes, it does. Uh, this is 2.93. Uh, and the units are BTU hour feet square Fahrenheit. Here we have 0.34, and the units are hour feet square Fahrenheit divided by BTU. So it's the inverse. So if I divide um, one divided by 2.93, the result should be a 0.34. Let me check. One divided by 2.93. Yeah, the result is a 0.34. Okay, so it's the same. This film coefficient of this uh, thermal resistance of the exterior air or the interior air, uh, it's related to, to this. Uh, we always can change that. Uh, how can we change that? If we go to boundary condition library, uh, here we can change the film coefficient and we can change the temperature. Uh, so that means uh, that this. Uh, boundary condition works when the outdoor temperature is zero Fahrenheit. If we are working in a different location with a different uh, outdoor temperature, we have to change this uh, wall exterior condition. So we can have wall exterior condition for Keene, wall exterior condition for Boston, one exterior condition for Miami. Uh, because if we were in Boston, we know that the outdoor temperature according to Revit is eight Fahrenheit. Okay, we're not doing that, or probably we will be doing that if we change the location. But uh, what you have to keep in mind is that this is not magic. So we control uh, these uh, parameters. Uh, so we control these parameters here and in the Excel file. The only thing we have to make sure is that both are the same. If we are working with 70 and uh, if, if in therm, the, the outdoor temperature is zero. So here we have to type zero. And then we can compare uh, results in the Excel file and therm. Okay. Uh, so now we have interior uh, condition, wall int, libraries, set boundary condition. It's uh, wall int and interior, redundant. The indoor temperature is 70 Fahrenheit. It doesn't change because the indoor temperature is going to be around 70 Fahrenheit. You see that the emissivity, if it's a uh, uh, if it's an opaque element, can be plywood, a wall, a roof, uh, I'm sorry, a brick, concrete, gypsum. The emissivity of solids, of uh, opaque solids, it's always around 0.9. So we don't have to change that. And uh, this is the H, this is the film coefficient inside. So this is 1.4. And in Revit, we have a 0.65. So if we divide one, divided by 1.4. Okay, so this is slightly different. One divided by, by 1.4 is a 0.7. And in this case is 0.62. Hmm. So there's uh, something that is not consistent here. It's, uh, it's not a big issue and we can always uh, go to boundary condition library and we can change that. So that would be, if we want to make the same value here, this will be one divided by 0.65. Okay, so this should be, instead of 1.4, a uh, 1.6.
Okay, once you have done this, you, you don't have to save, uh, you just close, and now it's 1.6 here, okay? So now we make sure that this Excel file and this, uh, uh, the, the, the therm file, they are on the same page. Okay, uh, so now we can calculate, uh, that's easy. And as you can see, all lines are parallels because we don't have corners or we don't have different materials. So the lines are parallels. If we analyze these temperatures, uh, they should match with the temperatures that we have here in this, uh, in this file. The thing is, uh, I like this file better because here we have uh, temperatures every inch. Okay, so we have zero, one, two, three. So those are different inches. Here, the temperatures don't have to do with the, so they, they probably in options, preferences, when we uh, work with simulation, we can adjust how many uh, elements we have. Probably I can analyze or I can analyze this one temperature every single inch. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is it. And now we can save this file, save as, and I'm going to save this. Kim Courses, Arch 360. I don't have a, Okay, I think it's here. Okay, so in this place, I'm going to open a new folder. This is a third templates. And now I'll open my own template and this is a wall. Uh, it's plywood, cellulose, six inches. I'm going to archive a value, probably because of the inch. Yeah. Okay, so you can type uh, inches when you are saving a, a file. Um, okay, so when we are uh, analyzing a new material, I can start doing doing this, um, and it will will work. Then um, I'm going to add something different here. I'm going to delete this. Uh, these polygons here. I keep the, the cellulose. And now I'm going to work with, uh, this is a wall. So imagine that this is a, a timber frame wall and I'm going to work with a stack. So it's an element that it's two by six. It's made of uh, wood, it's not plywood. It can be uh, pine. Yeah, so this one, pine. Okay. And now I'm going to uh, create the plywood here and the plywood there. Both are plywood high density. I have to work with the boundary conditions. So I have to uh, make this wall int library set boundary condition interior. This is 70 and 160. Okay. And uh, now I have to work with this library. Sorry, first I have to change this wall text, library set boundary condition, and I have to type here exterior. Okay, I calculate again. And uh, now I want to see the, the flux vectors. Okay, 
So this is a thermal bridge. So uh, the so there is something here. We have a lot of uh, flux vectors. Probably this is not the best uh, option. So I'm going to uh, use colors. I'm going to go to display options. And this is what we have to show, the color flux magnitude. Uh, we have to show color legend. And we have to show polygon outlines. OK, so here we can see the difference. These are not temperatures. These are uh, the, the color code. It's about the color, the, the heat flux. OK, so we have higher heat flux in where the thermal bridge is. Uh, but this value is uh, 6.3, and this is 8.7. Um, is it acceptable? Then we have to analyze the, the U value, or the, the sorry, the R value. Uh, so the R value, if we go to calculation and show you factors, we can show either the U value or the R value. Uh, as you can see here, it's uh, not applicable uh, because we have to change this. When we are analyzing this, uh, we have to change this in total length. Okay. So in total length, the R value uh, of this detail is 10, 10.4. Say OK. Uh, so with this, uh, we can prepare. I mean, if we are preparing a report on this uh, element, uh, we can. Select this. I will open the PowerPoint. A black presentation. And uh, well, we need to analyze this, and we need to uh, show the U factor, R value, total length. Okay, so that would be enough. There you go. Okay, with this, I have analyzed uh, this. The, um, I'll show you the difference between exterior and interior later. As you can see, when we have a parallel or a piece of a wall, there is no difference between exterior and interior. If we have corners, uh, there will be some, some difference here. Okay, uh, so this is the, but here we have all the information. We have the R value, uh, we have the heat flux so that we compare these with, with other solutions. And why am I doing this? Uh, because if you look at the uh, timber frame construction, so in timber frame construction, we have stats, and then we have the space for the cellulose or the, the rigid, whatever thermal insulation. And it's, uh, I mean, it's uh, the common measurements are that this stat is two by six, and then the, the distance between these and these it's 16 inches. So we have 14 inch thermal insulation or 14 inch space, and then two inches for the stat. Okay, so that is why I have created this detail, uh, which is 14, and then we have uh, two inches for the, for the stat. Okay, I can uh, save it. Close this, and I'm going to save as a wall plywood with stat. Uh, so here we have either stat or cellulose, uh, but it's uh, this chamber or this, uh, it's uh, the width is six inches. Okay, so now I have saved this. Um, what can I do now? I can improve this detail because as you can see, a 10, the R value is not acceptable at all. OK, 
okay, so six inches of cellulose, uh, it doesn't meet the passive house standards. Uh, what can I do? I can uh, change this, but uh, I have to get rid of this one. Um, because now I need to place here a rigid insulation. So I can place here a rigid insulation. How much? I don't know, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Will it be enough? We'll, we'll find out. Okay, so I have this. I'm going to apply outdoors the rigid insulation, which is the extruded polystyrene. This one, extruded polystyrene. And then I need another plywood sheet in here. Uh, one inch is too much. I'm doing this with one inch, but half would be better. Okay, one inch is too much. Uh, so this is the plywood. I have to work with the boundary condition. Select this. This is wall exterior set boundary condition exterior again and i can try uh, the same analysis now calculation okay but uh, I need the display options. I need the color legend. Where is the color legend? Let's work. Let's work with uh, flux lines. Flux vectors. Okay, that's working. Calculation. Color flux magnitude. And color legend. Okay, so now with this color legend, uh, we have the same colors, but again, the values uh, go from 1.6 to 2.2. Uh, so it's much better than, than before. So I can uh, take another screenshot. And place it here. Okay, so in this detail, the color legend or the heat flux uh, went from 6.3 to 8.7. And here it goes from 1.6 to 2.2. So we have reduced the heat flux a lot from 6 to 1.6 and from 8 to 2. Okay, so this is a, a good reduction. And now we have to, I'm sure that the, the R value has increased. So let's find out, we have to show you factors, R value, total length, and now it's 40. It's not bad. Okay, is it the passive house standards? Not yet, but we are in, we're in our way to, to achieve the, the passive house standard. It's 40, and I'm sure that if we didn't have the, the stat, it, we would have more than 50, only with the cellulose and this, but we have the stat, and that uh, causes the R value to, uh, to go down, or that brings down the, the R value. But um, 
uh, this is what we are we are doing. We are analyzing different uh, options, and we are quantifying. So, how much better is this one over this one? It's uh, four times better because uh, this is forty and this is ten. Uh, that means that I'm saving uh, uh, probably seventy five percent of the of the energy that we are losing through this detail by adding this. I'm saving 75% of the because from one to four, it's like, uh, yeah, so the, the proportion is 75%. This is something that we can uh, show our clients because for sure, if we are retrofitting that building, uh, if we are doing this, if we have this detail, this is what we have in all these old uh, single family houses in, in the in Kim. Uh, if the client is interested in retrofitting this, what can you do? Okay, if you do this, uh, it has a, it comes at a price. Yeah, you have to remove this uh, plywood sheeting, or probably you don't have to remove it. You have to uh, attach another uh, thermal insulation here outdoors. But you have to do something. How much does it cost? I don't know. This. Uh, how much energy do you save? Uh, now you have, you can uh, let your client know how much energy you are saving, and then you can run a. Uh, uh, life cost analysis in 10 years, 20 years, and you can see if it's worth it. It's not just, yes, do this. Trust me, do it. You will save a lot of money. Okay, how much? Now you can uh, exactly uh, tell your client how much money is, uh, they, they are going to, to save. Okay, uh, so this is um, something that works well. But uh, now we have to analyze the corners because in corners, in this kind of uh, elements, uh, we can uh, work with, with different solutions. So here we have different solutions, but as you can see, there is always a, a structural reinforcement at the corner. Mm, we have the stats. The distance between those stats is uh, usually 16 inches, but here at the corner, we have different options. But in every single option, you see that we have uh, we have issues because we are uh, creating another thermal bridge here. How does it work? So the next step, uh, we're going to work with uh, with corners. So imagine that we are working with this detail here, and uh, we are going to do that with therm. I think I already. exported this detail. I'm going to close it and open therm again. Yeah, because if you are working on the same file many times, uh, it will end up uh, failing. So I'm going to open the, the single one, the plywood. Uh, with this. There you go. Now we have to view the grid. And uh, I think it's at one inch. Yep. And the uh, zoom. Let's make it 10. <clears throat> okay. No, I didn't want it to open that. Okay, I'm opening this one. Fifteen, and I'm going to create a single detail, and then I will. I'll improve it. So I'm going to delete this and this. And uh, then I'm going to uh, create something different here. OK, I'm going to copy uh, one of those details. I'm going to copy this one, for example. OK, so we have another stat here and another stat there. So let's create a two by two three, four, five, six inches here. This has to be the pine. 
and then I need another two by six here, made of pine. This has to be cellulose. I need another six by 12, by 14, sorry, those, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This is cellulose. And now I can work with uh, plywood. So this would be plywood. Particle board plywood. Mm. Look at this. Uh, there's an issue with the with the boundary conditions. So if you are working with this, you'd better delete. All these and usually therm work better when you are working with continuous elements. OK, the fewer. Uh, borders between elements, the better. So that will work better if we make here uh, plywood. Where's the plywood? Here. And then I can do another, I can create another polygon. Here. And let me see if it works now. Yeah, it works. And now I can create uh, the boundary conditions. I select this and this. This is wall interior set boundary condition interior. And now I can select this and this wall exterior and boundary condition exterior. Okay. And now I can run the calculation. Yep. I have this, as you can see, when the lines are parallel, uh, that means that uh, I don't have any issues with the corner. Okay, so as of this point, I can consider that as of this point, the, the detail that I uh, created before is the same. So I don't have to calculate anything else. But if I show now the uh, U factor, I click R value and here all its total length. Now we see that the exterior and interior uh, are different values. Why? Well, because we are uh, losing or the amount of heat that we are losing here in this corner is the same heat that is going through that corner. So in uh, the interior, uh, this R value is always lower because the area is higher, is, is lower as well. Okay, so we are losing the same amount of uh, heat with fewer uh, square feet or square inches. Uh, so that's why this R value is, uh, is different. If they are parallels, the interior and exterior R values are the same. But if, uh, if we have a corner, the area of this outside wall is different than the area of this inside wall. So that's why these uh, values are different. If we had to analyze this, I would say that this is uh, what we have to look at. The interior one, not the exterior. Or, uh, well, I don't know, you might find different opinions on, on that. Uh, let's, uh, I, I've changed my mind. 
Okay, so uh, let's uh, select the, the exterior, the exterior one. So I'm going to write it down. The exterior R value for the corner is 13.98, 13.98, well, it's almost 14. But this takes into account a lot of things. It takes into account the difference. We have a corner, that we have a corner. It takes into account that there will be a thermal breach here because at this point, we don't have uh, thermal insulation. So I'm going to uh, take a screenshot of this. And I'm going to prepare another uh, report. with uh, color flux, a show color legend, and show polygon outlines. OK, now colors are different, but the scale, uh, the scale is different uh, as well. And How does it work now? Let me do this. And now we prepare this here. Okay. Uh, we are analyzing the same detail as uh, this is the same detail. We have the cellulose, the stat, and plywood here. Here we have a corner. Okay. Here the color legend, uh, this is 6.3 to 8.7. Here, the color legend is from uh, 0.4 to 14.5. Uh, uh, but this average, this bluish color, it's around uh, 5.76. And here, uh, the bulk of this was uh, 6 point something. So if you look at this, uh, the heat flux is the same. What is the, flick, the heat flux? through this, through the plywood, cellulose plywood, around between, yeah, around 6.6. .6. What is the heat flux with this iron color? It's around 6 point something as well, okay? So this might be confusing because this color uh, in this drawing is the same as uh, this color in this drawing. It's around 6, from 6.3 to 6.6. .6. And this color is, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's around six, six point something. But this is much uh, in this thermal breach. I'm losing up to 14.5. And here in this thermal breach, I'm losing around 8, 8.5. Okay, so this detail, and, and that makes sense because we have, uh, we have uh, these two, three stats uh, connected to each other. So we have more heat losses here. Uh, so that's confusing. Maybe there's a way to uh, work with uh, uh, this scale because it would be interesting having, if we're analyzing the same detail, it would be interesting having the same scale. I don't know, probably in settings there's something or probably not. I don't know. I have to find out. Okay. But uh, now we are having this. This is the wall. This is the corner. So I'm going to do the same with the corner uh, with this detail here. So I can open therm and I can either open the other one. Ah, let me save this. Save as. Uh, this is a uh, wall plywood, uh, cellulose plywood, but this is a corner. corner okay and now i'm going to uh how many inches we had i think it was eight inches here so i'm going to draw another polygon uh well first be careful because if we are Mm -hmm. 
we have to delete uh, the boundary conditions because now I'm changing the, the boundary conditions. I'm deleting this and now I'm working with eight inches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight inches, or not 18, eight. And now here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was the, the extruded polystyrene. And now I need another plywood. There you go. Um, I need to work with the boundary conditions. This is wall int. Okay, so it has keep it has kept. Uh, this boundary condition and now I have to make it wall x library set boundary and exterior I think we're all set we can calculate Mm -hmm. uh, we need the scale, uh, the color legend. Let's do it again. And the color legend doesn't show up. Great. So let me uh, use the flux vectors. So let me let me work with the cushion, okay? And the color legend and the polygons. Great. Sometimes, as you can see, the therm is not cooperating, uh, so you have to be patient. Mm. I can take a screenshot. And this is the the second option, and I need now the uh, the R values. You factor R value total length. As you can see now, the exterior is sixty four. The interior is 31. Uh, okay. um, I told you that uh, I was uh, changed my mind. So I, I've changed my mind in my mind again. So we're going to use the interior. There you go. <laughs> uh, we have improved this a lot. If we look at the interior, it's nine here, 31 there. The exterior is 13 here, uh, 64 uh, there. Okay, so uh, I, I keep on changing my mind, but I think we, we have to use always, if we want to be on the safe side, uh, we, can, we can work with the worst uh, data. And what is the worst here? It's always the interior because it has the lowest R value. That can be a criteria. Uh, if we are analyzing this, uh, we want to be on the safe side. So being on the safe side is that uh, we have two results from simulation. We take the worst. If we take the worst data from the simulation, well, there we are safe because if, if uh, everything goes better than expected, 
uh, we won't be uh, making a mistake by default. I will, we were we are making a mistake because we are considering the worst case scenario. So if the scenario is much better or it's a little better, uh, we are not having a we are not making a mistake. So that would be my criteria. Select the the lowest of these two magnitudes or these two R values. So the lowest is the interior in this case. If we have another detail, it might be different, but we can select the lowest uh, element. So the lowest is always uh, nine and 31 because this is uh, 13 and this is 64. Uh, if we compare the, we are comparing uh, interior with interior and exterior, so we are comparing the interior values here. So in this detail that don't meet the passive house standard at all, uh, the interior is nine and here the interior is 10. It makes sense, they are alike, uh, they are both uh, very low R values uh, and the straight element, so when we, when we don't have corners, the performance is slightly better. I think it makes sense, yeah. So this is 10 and this is uh, nine because we are looking at the interior one. If we are analyzing this, uh, interior is 40 and here interior is 31. Again, it makes sense. Uh, we are analyzing the interior side and when we have this element, it's not as good as this one uh, because here we are adding all these elements and here we're wrapping this with thermal insulation, but the effect of these structural elements that are thermal breaches uh, affect this performance. So this is 31 and this is uh, 40. Okay, so now we can quantify uh, a lot of things here. Imagine that we have a client, uh, we have to retrofit their, their house because uh, they are paying a lot of, uh, in the electricity bill every month, they are paying a lot of money uh, and they, you find out that they have this detail and that happens if the house was built uh, after the 1950s, most likely we will have this detail. We will have two uh, indoor and outdoor uh, sheeting materials, it can be plywood, gypsum or vinyl, whatever, it doesn't matter at all. What matters is the amount of thermal insulation. And if we are lucky, uh, we will have thermal insulation between the, the stats. We can find that we don't even have thermal insulation. So if, if we have this case, first we have to fill this cavity with thermal insulation and then we have to wrap this. We can either go in, inwards or outwards. Uh, usually we are retrofitting single family houses and if we have to add eight inches, if we are losing eight inches in every single wall, uh, we run out of space inside. So that's why the better option is to, yeah, it's better to wrap this outside. But it depends if you have a huge house uh, if you don't mind losing six or eight feet here, uh, you can you can do that. But it depends. We can quantify the the improvement from this to this. We go from ten to forty. That's a huge improvement. And then we can quantify the the thermal breach here. Here we go from ten to nine because of this because of this solution. It's not relevant. And here we go from 40 to 31. Mm, well, that's, uh, that's something. Can we reduce this or can we improve this? Uh, we might improve this uh, in the therm uh, detail. Uh, let me see if we, we have the problem here. That's, uh, uh, so let's get rid of this. And I'm going to, I'm going to do something that, uh, well, it's not easy to justify, but for the sake of knowledge, uh, let's do this. So let's place a one, two, three, four, five, six inches 
of thermal insulation here. And then let's go diagonally like this. So let's make it uh, extruded polystyrene. And now we're going to use plywood here. There you go. Now, boundary conditions. We have to select all these. This is wall interior. Set boundary interior. And calculate. We need the legend okay. Now let's work with PowerPoint. And we need the U value or the R value. Uh, okay. Take it easy. Now we can show the U factor, R value, total length, and total length. So have we improved anything at all? So the interior is 30 now, and it was 31. So this is not quite an improvement. We have improved the exterior one. The, ex the, the exterior is 71 now, and it was uh, 64. Hmm. Okay, so I'm not sure of that uh, detail. I thought it was going to be better, but uh, first, do we want this? Do we want to have this element on the, on the corners? Well, there will be a lot of issues because people tend to place things on the corners. Uh, and if you like tables or drawers or whatever, if you have this detail, uh, you cannot place, any, place anything here in the, in the corner. So is it uh, worth it? I don't think so. So I, I will discard uh, this detail because I, I don't think it's, uh, it's good because the improvement is not relevant. This is it. Um, this is about uh, analyzing the same detail with therm. And this is the kind of things that I expect. And we can analyze, especially corners, transitions between different uh, materials. And this is good because we can quantify uh, what, we are, what we are doing. And now, what is the final outcome of this? So imagine that I have a, a wall. This this is my house or my room or I'm not, I can analyze the whole building or just a room or and this is the the, the element the space I am analyzing and uh, the measurements we can say that. Uh, the text. 
uh, let's say that this is 20 feet by Ten. Okay, there is a thermal breach here, so we have uh, we have analyzed uh, these details, and uh, shape field, no field, and shape outline. Yeah, I'll, I'll show how to make another material in therm. Let me finalize this, and then I'll help you out with this. Okay, so we have this element. We have analyzed this this corner, and we know that um, looking at this. So after, uh, let's say, a foot. Uh, the, the the behavior of this is a steady behavior so we don't have this uh, the influence of this so as of this point we have the same color so when we have the same color that means that the corner doesn't affect here so we can uh, say that the area affected by this can be one foot So there is one foot here, and then we have 18 feet here. If the total is uh, 20 feet, so the, the area affected by this thermal breach or this corner is one foot, then we have 18 feet that is not affected. And then we have one foot here, and here would be the other way around. Here we will have eight. There will be a foot affected here. and a foot affected there. What does it mean? If we're analyzing uh, thermal loads, we know that the thermal uh, load is uh, thermal load is um, the U value times the area times uh, indoor minus outdoor temperature. We know that this is indoor minus outdoor temperature. Thermal, let's say heating. We are working in heating. What is the U value? Uh, the U value is uh, one over the R value. Uh, we have the area instead of using the area we are using the length because uh, well we are going from but we want to quantify a percentage of improvement so let's say that this is the length and this is indoor minus uh, outdoor temperature so let's do it again uh, one one over uh, what was the uh, the r value uh, in this case, it was uh, 40.14. One over uh, 40.14 times uh, the length, uh, let's say 18 inches, 18 feet, sorry. And then indoor minus outdoor temperature is 70 minus zero. This is the heating load through the wall. What is the heating load through the corner? So the heating load through the corner is one over, uh, not to use brackets. The thermal load through the corner is one over the R value in the corner. It was 31.15. Do 
the interior one, 31.15. Thirty-one point one five. What is the distance? So this is a foot plus a foot. So this is two feet. Two. Equals and equals. So how much is this? It's. Uh, There you go. This is one divided by 40.14 times 18 times 17. Uh, so this is 31. Point three nine units. Well, 31.39, uh, since we're working with uh, lengths, the units will be BTU, hour, feet, Fahrenheit. And what is the thermal loads through the, the thermal, the heating load through the corner? So that would be one divided by uh, 31.15 times two times 70. Okay, this is 4.49, 4.5, these units. So what is the uh, percentage? through the corner, it lost. Um, so the percentage is always the, um, uh, 4.5, the amount of energy that we are losing through the corner, uh, divided by the total uh, energy loss. So what is the total energy loss? 4.5 plus uh, 31.39 times 100. So this is 4.5 divided by uh, 8, Okay, then this is a 12%. Okay, so with this uh, exercise, we can evaluate uh, the thermal bridge. Is it relevant? Okay, we are losing 12% of the energy. If we had a wall without corners, uh, we would be using, uh, we will be uh, yeah, mm, losing less heat. We have corners now. We need corners for sure. Uh, what is the percentage? It's a uh, twelve percent. Usually, everything that is above ten percent, uh, people tend to to do something to prevent this from happening. Mm. But uh, that would be different if we had. A longer wall, if this uh, were 50 and these were uh, 20, uh, this percentage uh, would be uh, reduced because now we are not multiplying here by 18 inches. Here we're, so let's say 20, 40, 48. Okay, so if we're making this again. That would be one divided 40.14 times 48 times 70. 
that would be H is three point seven. And the percentage through the, this doesn't change because the corner affects that uh, foot here, a foot in this direction and a foot in this direction. So what is the percentage? Uh, so it's always uh, 4.5 divided by 4.5 plus 83.7. And now the percentage is lower. Divided by 88.2. So now the percentage is only 5%. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, the larger the space we're analyzing, the less affect uh, these corners or thermal breaches or whatever. But in small houses, uh, the percentage, it's much more than in large houses. Uh, what does it mean? Okay, so that makes us think, uh, what are we analyzing? We're analyzing a large building. Uh, we have to focus. Thermal breaches are not important here in the corner. But what really matters is the, the thermal insulation that we have in the in the wall itself. In small spaces or in small houses, it's the other way around. We have to focus on, on corners because uh, it's a huge percentage of the total heat loss of the of the window, of the window of the building, sorry. Okay, so those are the lessons that we need to, to understand. Now you, you know that. What is the limit? What is a small house and what is a big house? Everything that exceeds 12%, uh, uh, we have to focus on the, on the thermal breach. If it's not exceeding the 10%, the 10 if it's below the 10%, it's fine. So the thermal breach or the corner is not relevant. And then we have to focus on the wall itself. So that's the criteria for, for that. OK. Uh, now, uh, Nash, I'm going to show you this again, but I'm going to, yes, I'm going to open, do I want to save changes? No, I don't. I'm going to open Therm again. And I'm going to open the file. Uh, the first template we created here. Okay. Imagine that we want to create a, a material from scratch, a material that we don't have here. I don't know what kind of materials uh, we don't have. Uh, for example, uh, asphalt. I don't think we have asphalt in the firm. Uh, we don't. Okay, so uh, we are going to create asphalt. So if I select uh, this, I can go to libraries and I can go to uh, material library. Okay, so in material library, I have to open a new one. And I have to create the name as fault. It's a solid, it's not a frame cavity, it's a solid material. And uh, now we always have to uh, type here the conductivity. So the conductivity, I have to go to this database in asphalt in the yellow column because we have these units. Uh, we have a 0.36. So I have to type here a point. 0.36. The emissivity, if it's a solid material, opaque solid material, it's always 0.9. So we don't have to change it. And that's it. We close it. Change selected object to asphalt. Okay, yes. And this is asphalt. Can we edit it? Yes. If we go to library and we go to uh, material library, I'm sure that I can change the color. So if asphalt is something uh, grayish, I can uh, change the color. 
and now I have a different material. Well, I have a different color, but the material is asphalt. And if we open the material library, the conductivity is what matters here. It hasn't changed. Okay, so creating new materials is quite easy. You only have to open the database, uh, make sure that you use this uh, element. It's different when it comes to uh, aluminum. Okay, when it comes to aluminum, for example, if I'm using aluminum, here you see that the finish matters. We have oxidized, anodized, painted, alloy, uh, because uh, the material library here, the emissivity is not the same. It has changed. But this is when we are working with glass and metallic uh, materials. Mm. But uh, creating uh, solid materials other than glass and, and metals, I think it's a piece of cake. It's quite easy. Okay, 